Typefaces come in all different shapes and sizes and can be categorized depending on their characteristics. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the different types of font classifications that have emerged through history. Along with each category, you'll find some font type examples that you can use as inspiration. Some of these examples are from Avado Elements. They have a really great font library that is updated every day. So I'll link to some fonts from there so you can check them out. Let's start with the first one, serif. Serifs are the small feet at the end of a stroke on a letter. Serif fonts are generally used for body copy because they're easy to read and they're comfortable for the reader's eyes. So let's take a look at the subclassifications. The first one is old style. Most of these typefaces were created as metal type for early printing processes. So some of the main features here are the characters have a diagonal stress rather than vertical to emulate a calligraphic feel. The ascendance, which is here we can see on the L, there is a slight inclination there. The end of the serif can range from straight to rounded and have prominent brackets. There is a low contrast between thick and thin strokes of the letter form. The serifs can also be straight or slightly cupped. You will notice the L is slightly cupped at the bottom, while the Y has a fairly straight serif. The crossbar on the lowercase e is usually angled, and this characteristic is borrowed from the angle at which a writer holds a pen. As far as height goes, the x height on the lowercase letter forms is tall compared to the cap height. An old style font example is Minion. Next we have Transitional. The printing process was more refined and allowed for elegant details to be included in a typeface. The serifs during this period were sharper and with a smaller bracket, almost flat. Compared to the old style characters, transitional typefaces have a nearly if not completely vertical stress. The contrast between thick and thin strokes is even higher, and the serif incline on the ascenders were slightly flatter. This style maintained the tall x height and the ascenders height compared to the cap height that was seen on the old style. A very popular transitional font is Times New Roman. The third subcategory here is Modern. As printing processes improved in the late 18th and early 19th century, the presses became more and more accurate. The serifs went from curved to completely flat. The brackets disappeared or were very, very small. The stress on the rounded characters is now completely vertical. And the contrast between thick and thins is exaggerated. The terminals like here on the R were near if not completely rounded. The X height here is very tall compared to the cap height. An example of a mother font type is Bodoni. The last subcategory within the serifs is the slab serif. As printing processes evolved, it allowed for even more refined and more ink coverage on paper. A few of their characteristics is the shape of the serif is square compared to previous categories. The serif gets a major revamp, is thick, heavy, and with little to no bracket connection to the strokes. The thickness throughout the characters is the same, and the rounded characters have a complete vertical stress. The X height tends to be very tall in relation to the cap height. Some slab serif font types from Envato Elements are BW Glen Slab, Martini Thai Noyes Lab, and Archibald Serif. The second category of font classifications is Sans Serif. Sans comes from the French word without, and that is exactly what this category is, typefaces without serifs. Sans Serifs stripped away all of the handwritten features that serifs wanted to emulate. These modern letter forms aimed for high legibility at long distances. Let's take a look at the subcategories. First up is Grotesque. This style was the first commercially popular sans serif in the early 1900s. Some of the features are, the uppercase G usually has a spur. There is a slight contrast between the thin and thick strokes. The cap height and ascenders were usually at the same height. The most common characteristic is the bowl and the loop on the lowercase g. This is also called a two-story G. An example of a grotesque font type is B.W. Glenn Sans. 
The second subcategory is neo-grotesque. Neo-grotesque typefaces are refined versions of grotesque fonts that came later in the 1900s. Some of the characteristics are the letter forms become simpler, minimal, and neutral. The stroke is uniform throughout the letter form. The terminals are usually perfectly straight, making them appear geometric. The characters E and A have a closed aperture gap. But the most notable feature of neo-grotesque forms is the single story G. A couple of examples of neo-grotesque font types here are RNS Sans and RNS Sisma. The third subcategory is humanist. Typographers wanted to bring back the calligraphic influence to the letter forms. Their form was based on Roman style proportions. The contrast between thick and thin strokes is more apparent. There is a calligraphic influence on the tail of the lowercase a. The aperture on the letters a and s is wider for improved legibility. And the letter g includes the double story g to mimic the old style serif. An example of humanist font types is myriad. The last subcategory here is geometric. This style was popular in the 1920s and originated in Germany. Some of the main features are the characters have a uniform stroke thickness and optically circular bowls. There is a strong emphasis on straight lines, therefore the stroke has a uniform thickness. This category features a single story lowercase a and g. Some geometric font types from Envato Elements are Nista Geometric, and Bergen Sans. Next step, we have script. Script fonts are based on the flow of cursive handwriting and are divided into two categories, formal and casual. As the name implies, formal scripts are the fanciest. Some of the main characteristics are, the letter forms are cursive and inspired by handwriting from the 17th and 18th century. All the characters include a connecting end tail. For fluidity. Flourishes and swashes are a big part of cursive fonts to adorn the characters. Some contemporary examples of formal script fonts from Envato Elements are Big Shine Script and Roseville. The second subcategory of script fonts is Casual. These developed in the 20th century and were inspired by wet brush strokes. Let's take a look at a couple of their details. Casual scripts mimic wet brush strokes or pen, and the letter forms are more relaxed, so they don't have to be necessarily connected. Some types of script fonts from Envato Elements are Castinos and Sebastian. The next category is calligraphic fonts. Calligraphic fonts have become more and more popular in the last few years. Compared to the script category, Calligraphic fonts tend to have a modern spin. The letter forms are quite contemporary, but they are still trying to mimic brush and nib strokes. The contrast between thick and thin strokes adds texture to the font. Some calligraphic font type examples from Envato Elements are Bold Ink and Bellow. Next up is the handwriting style. Handwritten fonts are fairly new, just a few years ago they were difficult to come by. The main details here are that handwritten fonts lack the structure and definition that fonts in the script category have. Handwritten fonts are very casual, and they try to mimic modern-day handwriting. Some handwriting font type examples from Envato Elements are Say La Vie and Watcher. Next we have Black Letter or Gothic which dates back to the 1400s and is based on medieval calligraphy. Some of the main features are that black letter typefaces were drawn with a flat nib held at an angle. The letter forms have a vertical stress, mainly using horizontal, vertical, and angle strokes. Due to the nib pen, there is a high contrast between the thick and thin strokes. Some contemporary black letter font type examples from Envato Elements are Catedral and Oscar Pro. And last, we have display or decorative. This category is the largest and most diverse. The main characteristics these fonts have 
is that they are not suitable for body copy as they become very illegible. The characters here can often be experimental or distressed. Most of these typefaces are developed with a very specific use in mind. A couple of examples here from Envato Elements are Pittsburgh and Morning Glory. Fonts can evoke specific moods based on the form or the era they were inspired by. Depending on the project, you'll want to convey and communicate a feeling through the design. Let's look at what some of these categories mean. Serif, often seen as formal fonts that can evoke an older vibe. Use serifs for long-form copy like books, blogs, or magazines. The serifs help the reader's eyes follow the letter forms easily. Sans serif, one of the most versatile categories. You can use them as display or long-form copy. These letter forms are clean, minimal, and modern looking. Some fonts in this category can be neutral, while others can have just a touch of personality that can add some zing to your design. Script, whether you use a formal or informal script font, you'll hands down communicate an old world vibe. Use these fonts on historical pieces, wedding invitations, and book covers. Handwriting and calligraphic. If you want to evoke a personal feel, this is the font for your project. These fonts can vary in styles. Do be careful when choosing one for your project as depending on the style you can add a certain mood that can range from cute to grunge. Black letter. If you're looking for a moody and dark font, this gothic inspired category is perfect. They can be ornamental, heavy, and definitely hard to read as long form text. Use this style for headlines or display copy. Display and decorative. Like the last few examples, use display as display. These fonts are usually designed with a very specific purpose in mind, to call for attention. So don't use these fonts at a small scale as some decorations can make them difficult to read. This is an ever evolving list and I've highlighted the most basic styles that can definitely help you narrow down your search. Do you have a new typographic trend you're following? Let us know. And just a reminder, if you're looking for some quality fonts, take a look at the Envato Elements font section. The ever-evolving library has a great variety of fonts for your next project. From all of us at Envato, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.